I'm Julie Taymor. I'm a director of theater, opera, and film. I'm Jody Williams, um, the 1997 recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. I'm the Reverend Chloe Breyer. I direct the Interfaith Center of New York and am an Episcopal priest. My on name staff is Charlie McCormick, Phillips. and I was CEO of the organization for 15 years. Uh, in the My name is Blanca Homolova. I'm the director of the HIV AIDS programs. My name is Ava Arroyo, and in 2011, program. I did the uh, Iraqi Young Leadership Exchange program. Hi, I'm Amy Brenneman. Uh, I am a, an actress, writer, and producer. I'm Susan Mycellus. I'm a photographer today, documentary My name is Serena, and I'm from Tajikistan. I'm 17. I'm a second generation experimenter. Uh, My father had done. Um, in college, gone to France. Um, my father is Stephen Bryan. National Honors Program in 6869. I'm Catherine Lorenz. I'm a second generation experimenter. My mom did the experiment. My name in is the 60s Bill era. Crocker, and I went to France on the experiment in 1949. Sheldon uh, Gilbert went to Italy in uh, 1990. SIT ultimately got me to Mexico. Right. Uh, I was an experimenter to Spain in experiment 1965. For international living in Kathmandu, Nepal, and when I was 16 to Sri Lanka. I don't think any organization has uh, prepared more global leaders over the past decades than world learning. Everything we do fits into our mission, vision, and approach. You know, no matter whether it's international development programs or it's a study abroad or it's, uh, you know, experiment in international living, there is a common theme. I mean, we start with advancing leadership. The experience of India and the temples and the people and the intensity and the color was one of the strongest, most potent experiences I've ever had in my life. The beauty of the landscape and the people and the arts, the performances that I saw there, which if anybody knows my work has become such a, a, a seminal part of my life. I think Lion King is a perfect example in the way that we do the Lion King. This notion of crossing cultures and crossing boundaries has always been an enormously important part of my, my life and my work in the arts. In my experience at SIT, I really started to wonder more and more about rural poverty issues. I realized there was a great opportunity to have an impact in rural poverty and rural health issues. Um, and so I ended up founding an organization and living in Oaxaca, Mexico for almost six years dealing with those exact issues. As I'm walking to church and everyone's staring at me in a small village, I'm terrified, I'm wondering why everyone's staring at me. When I continued going to church on my way back and this when my Italian brother finally returned, and I was telling him how I said, listen, I'm not sure how comfortable I feel here. Everyone's staring at me. He's like, oh, everyone's staring at me because everyone thinks that you're, that you're beautiful, your skin's beautiful. I said, oh, I can get used to this. So it actually was the first time I actually felt, it's interesting, coming here as an immigrant to America, realizing in a lot of ways that your skin makes you an anathema, that I actually had the converse relationship where it now was in another foreign territory, actually realized that it was actually this interesting gift. During my semester abroad programs, we had the opportunity to meet with His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and it was a really remarkable and life-changing experience for me, as one of the things that we asked was his view of Western Buddhists, those who convert to Buddhism in the West. His reply was that it was important to go with the religion that was most suited to you, but on the whole, one can do the most good in the tradition of one's own culture. And I took that to heart, actually, and uh, that has something to do with why I am an Episcopal priest today. It's, it's more than just knowing about the world. It's more than just traveling in the world. People travel all the time. Do they come home and do anything with it? It's, it's active travel, you know, which Dr. Watt, who founded the experiment, you know, that was his thinking. It wasn't about, well, let's go on a vacation. It was about, let's go and experience the other culture. Let's go and actually interact with the people. It had never been heard of that an organization would teach people languages, place them with families, immerse them in another culture. Donald Watt in 1932, you know, created what, something that now involves millions and millions and millions of young people all over the world. Well, of course, Peace Corps is a direct descendant of the Experiment International Living. 
Sergeant Shriver, who had been one of the very earliest experimenters and experiment leaders, when President Kennedy asked him to actually establish the Peace Corps, asked the experiment to do the first block of training. And they founded the School for International Training in Vermont in order to have a place to do that. It gave you a great feeling that you were doing something important, significant, and I was full of that in those days. We had the end of the war in Vietnam, and there were hundreds of thousands of refugees from Southeast Asia. State Department picked World Learning as the leader of these massive language, cultural, education programs. This was one of the largest organized resettlements of people ever in the history of the world. We have programs in, in Liberia, in Angola, in the Caribbean, Jamaica and the Bahamas, and in Ethiopia. We work with individuals, with communities, and with institutions so that they can prevent HIV infections and they can protect themselves or their communities from the epidemic. I think world learning is unique because we not only teach development, we do development. We receive funds from U.S. Agency for International Development, U.S. Department of State, local governments, and a variety of private donors. This allows us to directly implement development programs in more than 20 countries. We have several programs in North Africa. Um, the countries include Algeria, Libya, Egypt, and Tunisia. We are working to improve science, technology, math, and education in the region. It's very important that the young people learn these in-demand skills because it helps them find jobs and be successful in the global marketplace. There was about um, 20 American students and 50 Iraqi students and they came all the way over to Vermont and we did like a lot of dialogue sessions where we would just talk about, you know, things about their Islam or Christianity or 9-11 um, and it just opened up our eyes because all we were fed was what we saw in the media. It started out with a staff of one and that was me and it grew to about 1,300 NGOs around the world, 90 countries I think at the time. And in the space of five years from the public launch, uh, we convinced governments to ban landmines. It was amazing. First time in history that a conventional weapon used for almost a century by every fighting force in the world was banned. So it's that, for that reason that um, my work and that of the landmine campaign was recognized with the Peace Prize. After the Iraqi program, I decided to apply to the State Department program. And this past summer, I spent six weeks in Rabat, Morocco, living with a Muslim host family, learning Arabic. Without leaders, without people prepared to step up to the plate with the skills and capabilities and networks to pull things together, lasting change does not happen. I received a scholarship to go on the experiment and now I'm actually, I've created scholarships for experimenters and you know, what does that mean for me? Uh, it means everything. To me that is, to me that is the, 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 the gift of the experiment in a lot of ways. It's never ending. Keeping, whether they're programs or whatever they are that allow people to actually lift up and put their feet onto the soil of another place is never going to be replaced by any technology, it just cannot be replaced. I think that's one reason why the programs thrive, for you to start looking critically at your own culture. We do transform lives. We certainly impact and change lives, um, or help people change lives, help others change lives. When you find something you're passionate about, you want to change it, or you want to make change, you want to make a difference. Step by step, drop by drop, person by person, trying to, to help the world. Once you've sort of experienced the world at that level, you want to continue to, and that's why it's so important. Learning a different culture, it's really important because it's one of the ways to find yourself in life. There's things that you can't learn about in a textbook, you know, face-to-face -face interaction and diplomacy. Um, I just learned is just so monumental in learning about the world. It is really incredible that Nobel Prize winners and people who have revolutionized the arts and been scholars and judges and 
executives all over the world have had this experience and been transformed by it. It's really crucial that as we look to the future, we make that available to even more young people than we have in the past, and that all of us who care about a better world for the next generation help world learning become even more significant, more impactful, uh, and more successful than it has been. Thank you.